Napoleon Bonaparte was a man who became so famous for his conquests that he truly needs no introduction. He was known for many things, but nothing he did was as impressive as his conquering of Egypt. Interestingly enough though, the coolest part about his expedition, which he claimed was for glory, was actually all the wonders and sights that he got to see. Napoleon was always fascinated by the world that resided in the east of France, and after hearing all of his stories, it's easy to see why. Napoleon was one of the many figures throughout history who viewed Egypt as a sort of earthly paradise, and like many of his scholarly influences, he wished to study its wonders. Not to mention his plan to liberate Egypt from its oppressors at the time, the Mamelukes. This is why, by May of 1798, Bonaparte had amassed an armada that consisted of 180 ships, plus another 220 ships from other European ports that joined up with them once they hit Mediterranean waters. Among the massive French force that those ships carried were more than 160 of France's best surveyors, engravers, linguistic experts and scientists, each of whom was handpicked by Napoleon himself. It was a six-week journey for the ships to reach their secret destination, which happened to be a fishing village about eight miles away from Alexandria, an ancient port city. The French warships, including Napoleon's massive ship Lorient, anchored in Abukir Bay, where they remained to defend the shoreline. The Mamelukes within Alexandria fought hard to defend their city walls, but it wasn't long before they were overpowered. Napoleon successfully overtook the city, and then he, along with his army and the scholars, began their 43-mile march to Cairo. This journey meant crossing a very large desert, and with very little supplies, many French soldiers died horrible deaths during the expedition. But those who survived saw the glory that they sought. The massive French force reached the Nile River by the middle of July in 1798, and they were officially within the sight of the Great Pyramid. The army eventually made it to the city of Cairo, where they faced the final resistance by the Mamelukes, and again, they easily overtook the city. It is said that within a single day, Napoleon Bonaparte ended the Mamelukes' rule over Egypt forever. That being said, his expedition for knowledge and to document all the great wonders of Egypt had only just begun. Now, as you'd expect during this expedition, Napoleon and his troops encountered some awe-inspiring sights. But Napoleon took his visit a step further by becoming one of the only people in history to spend the night inside one of the Great Pyramids. At least, that's how the story goes. According to the reports by the few who supposedly accompanied Napoleon on his sleepover in the Great Pyramid of Giza, the moment came about after Napoleon had decided to journey into the heart of the colossal structure. Now, you have to remember that these pyramids were supposedly designed as tombs for pharaohs and had a lot of allure to them to any adventurer, which we all know Napoleon was at heart. So, when he had the chance on August 22nd, 1799, he, along with a few trusted individuals, spent several hours exploring and studying the interior chambers within the pyramid. After spending hours exploring the dark and cramped labyrinth, Napoleon decided to sleep within the pyramid. He didn't just sleep anywhere, though. According to the stories that have been told, Bonaparte specifically spent the night in the king's chamber. Now, for those who might not know the interior layout of the Great Pyramids, which is basically anyone and everyone, the king's chamber was a granite-lined vault that was located right inside the center of the pyramid. In the Great Pyramid specifically, the king's chamber was designed for the pharaoh Khufu, one of the most powerful rulers of Egypt's old kingdom. It's within that chamber that Khufu was laid to rest for all eternity. And to this day, it still contains the remains of his sarcophagus. Now, I know what you're thinking. Cool story, but who would spend their night in a creepy place like the Great Pyramid? Well, if the story is true, then it didn't turn out to be the perfect night, like Napoleon may have envisioned. According to a more detailed telling of the story, Napoleon ventured into the pyramid alone, or with a small group of people, and brought nothing with him other than a candle. The next morning, though, when he emerged from the pyramid, the emperor was supposedly pale as a ghost and visibly shaken from whatever had transpired within. To make things even more interesting, Bonaparte supposedly refused to answer any questions about what happened in the tomb that night. This trend of silence about the Egyptian pyramids went on for nearly 23 years until finally it seemed like Napoleon was ready to reveal what actually happened. It was while he was lying on his deathbed that he supposedly consented to speak of his experience. He struggled to sit himself upright and began to speak about the pyramid before almost immediately stopping himself. And according to those around him, he said the quote, Oh, what's the use? You'd never believe me. Now, that's mysterious. 
Napoleon's sleeping within the pyramid has since been seen as a symbolic gesture of his successful conquest. But is it true? Napoleon's expedition and night within the pyramid is one of the most debated aspects of his entire expedition through Egypt. Some historians even argue that the tale was made up or strongly embellished in order to boost Napoleon's image and maybe even as a way to align himself with the great pharaohs of Egypt. The main reason why this is such a highly debated topic is simply the lack of evidence to support the idea that Napoleon actually stepped foot inside the pyramids. That being said, if you take into account the memoir written by Dominique Vivant Denon, an artist who accompanied Napoleon during his expedition to Egypt, there might be some truth to the story. You see, in Denon's memoirs, he recalls a night that he spent inside the pyramid, and within the story he mentioned that Napoleon was there with him. The story of Napoleon's night in the Great Pyramid was also confirmed by Colonel Seeger, who was part of Napoleon's army. Here's where the skeptics come in. It's hard to claim that either of the accounts for Napoleon's night in the pyramid could actually count as evidence, considering they could be biased due to Denon and Seeger's relationship with Napoleon. They could have simply been confirming Napoleon's tale to help further boost his profile and alleged greatness. Not to mention that there were a few people who were close with the emperor who seemed to discount the idea that Napoleon even went into the Great Pyramid whatsoever. According to Napoleon's private secretary, a man named de Borian, who would have been with him during the expedition, Bonaparte never even went inside the tomb. Instead, he said that Napoleon waited at the base of the pyramid as his men scaled the side of it. And while he waited, the emperor simply passed the time by calculating how much stone it took to create the pyramids. On top of that, according to reports, Napoleon was on his deathbed for nearly 40 days, during which time he supposedly never even mentioned the pyramids. In fact, according to Napoleon's valets, his doctors and the Grand Marshal, his last words had nothing to do with what happened in the pyramid. While it's unclear what Bonaparte's last words actually were, it's debated that he either said France, my son, the army, or France, army, head of the army, Josephine. Needless to say, there is no way of knowing what actually happened on the night of August 22nd, 1799. But if Napoleon did spend his night in the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid, that's truly impressive. Whether you believe the stories or not though, there's no denying that the emperor had a strong fascination with Egypt, which is where the 160 scholars, scientists and other experts from France came in during his expedition. The whole reason behind Napoleon personally recruiting all of these experts was for them to professionally document the mysterious land. This would be Napoleon's way to create bridges of understanding between the Egyptian and the French people. When the scholars and their assistants signed onto the project, they did so knowing that their main focus was going to be on the Arabic culture along with the monuments, the animals, the vegetation and the overall geology of the country. The best part was that Napoleon specifically planned for all of the documented data to be published in what became known as the Description de l'Egypte. That being said, the first goal of France's expedition to Egypt before knowledge was conquest. This meant that the 160 scholars didn't actually receive their first mission until June 1799. At that time, the Scientific and Artistic Commission was officially organized and assigned the task of examining the environment that surrounded the upper region of the Nile River. Following that single expedition, two more were organized in November of that same year to explore both sides of the Nile River in Lower Egypt. And though it took almost a year to get going, the commission immediately made some amazing discoveries. They documented their discovery of temples that were buried under the sand, along with massive obelisks and the famous Sphinxes of Egypt. They documented the vast amount of engraving and hieroglyphs that they discovered, and even got to examine the Temple of Karnak. When all was said and done, the members of the Scientific and Artistic Commission returned to their base in Cairo, used the material they gathered to create their massive publication. However, they hit a small snag, the commission was forced to remain in Egypt for two more years, as they remained under attack by British forces. However, by October 1801, the last of the commission was allowed to leave the country, and managed to bring their documents and even some antiquities back to France with them. After the members of the commission returned home, they compiled all of the information they gathered, and began creating the Description de l'Egypte, which was officially published in 1802. Everyone involved in the publication received a fixed salary payment at the expense of the public library, and it wasn't even technically finished by that point. It took another quarter of a century for all involved to put their collections and data into the print, meaning that the final version of the Description wasn't published until 1828. 
By then, Napoleon had already been exiled and passed away. That didn't diminish the effect that the publication had though. The Description de l'Egypte opened the eyes of the Western world to the amazing depth of Egypt's previously unknown wonders. I'm curious to know what you think about Napoleon's expedition to Egypt, particularly the part about his night in the Great Pyramid. Do you think he actually spent the night in the King's Chamber? Be sure to let me know what you think and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and to subscribe to the channel to ensure that you don't miss any more rad history.